Hey, welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. I have a great show for you today. And, and I know I say that so often because I feel like I have some great guests, and, and I, I do. But today is a personal hero. Uh, a few years ago, I was at an event, a networking event, and this man stood up and he said, Hi, I'm Howard Berg. I'm world's fastest reader. And I, and I almost fainted. And the reason is, is that Howard was and is one of my personal heroes. When I went to college, I literally, and this is an embarrassing statement, but I'll say it anyways on national TV, <laughs> is that I was told that 99% of all the rest of the freshmen enrolled were placed above me. And that I really didn't have much of a prayer of lasting six weeks at the university. Well, I proved him wrong, and I sent the, the guy an, an invitation to my graduation, or at least I, I guess I wanted to, but I, the point is, is that I got my degree, and afterwards I never wanted to be called an idiot again. And so accelerated learning became a hobby. In, in the 90s, I went through Mega Speed Reading by Howard Berg. And he was talking about how he had developed the skill of going from, you know, just an average reader to over 80 pages a minute. He has the world's record in Guinness that stood for, since 1990 to today. He still is the world's fastest reader at over 80 pages a minute, and he's here to tell you how you can learn, learn the same tool, the same technique. Howard, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to have you on the show, but I want to get into, rather than what you did for me personally, which was massive, you, you took my reading rate from just a couple of hundred uh, words per minute to over a thousand in a very short period of time, and it was a skill. You weren't born with this, were you? No, no. I, I actually uh, developed It's an interesting story. I grew up in the projects of Brooklyn. Anyone there, you ever saw this, the movie West Side Story? It was like the movie without the, the dancing and the music. Uh, I, <laughs> met Bernard, <laughs> I met Bernardo. He had a knife. He put it to my throat. But I found something interesting. There was one safe place in my neighborhood. It was the library. Really? Have you ever been in a library and felt threatened by gangbangers? Not this week. Or a <laughs> <laughs> There's you know, some sort of filter there at the door. They don't want to go there. It's like vampires in churches. Yeah. They don't do that. They don't do Barnes and Nobles either. And I discovered it at a very early age. This only place safe in my neighborhood to play was the library. And they had books there. So I read them. And I got really good at reading because that's all I could do and not get killed. Oh, really? And I had very good reading skills as a result. When I went to college, I went to the State University of New York, Binghamton. We're going to be lecturing in two weeks. Oh, nice. On what I'd done to this psychobiology department. I was actually their first psychobiologist. And I, I, I found out that they don't teach learning. Right. In school, I was a biologist. I went to college, studied biology. In my junior year, I got interested in the brain. How do we learn? I went to the dean, I said, I want to do a dual major, bio and psych. He says, you only have two, two more terms. You haven't had any psych courses. You have to do six science courses a term. And frankly, like they told you, you're not smart enough. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. They don't teach learning in school or work. Right. They tell you what to learn, why to learn, what will happen if you don't learn. But they don't tell you you can listen to a song on the radio for six seconds and sing it perfectly for the rest of your life and never have a problem. Then you read a book that actually has value. And 15 minutes after you put the book down, you don't remember the title and who wrote it, let alone what was in the book. Right. So I cracked the code on learning, got up to 80 pages a minute, did a four-year psych program in a year. I did a graduate course in educational psych in seven hours. Got a B plus on the AP test. And in 50 minutes, it was a six-hour test. And then I realized that what I was doing was teachable. Right. And I'm going to share with you today some of the stories of some of the people I helped and how I helped them. And I'd also like to give our audience some of the strategies that I use so they could actually test it out for themselves and see an immediate improvement. Well, that and I mean, we've got the IamSpeedReading.com where people can actually acquire a, uh, a, a course that will help them really develop the skill that you taught me years yes. ago, right? Better. You took the uh, cassette tape version. Yeah, I did. You know, I, it was almost like a phonograph. It's like a phonograph record. You know. Yeah. I wore the words <laughs> off it though. It didn't, I, I I played it until the the tape ate, it was eaten. You know. But. Actually, it was from Vic Conan. Vic Conan and I are very good friends, and it was Nigel Conan that did that. I used to lecture with Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. and I got to know Vic and all those people, and they made sixty-five million dollars selling 
the cassette program. Now it's on DVD. Nice. And I've also upgraded more skills. I found out people don't want to read faster. They want to learn smarter. They want to learn more. And I mean, quicker. that was the thing. When I was in college, I spent hours and hours in the first few years. I spent so much time reading, learning what I thought, what I thought was learning. And then it wasn't until my junior year that I flipped the switch and finally went, oh, this is what I need to do is learn each day what I need to know today rather than trying to cram for the test the night before. And that might have worked in high school, but in college, it will eat your lunch. <laughs> I was with Dick Cavett, the famed talk show host, about 15 years ago. He was on MSNBC at the time. And he told me a story about Woody Allen. He said he was interviewing Woody, and Woody said he took Evelyn Woods, and he read the War and Peace book in five minutes. And he said, that's amazing. What's it about? And he said, the Russian Revolution, that's all I remember. So, so, <laughs> so that was the problem with speed reading. People had a very bad taste. They'd speed up, and as soon as they slowed down to learn something, the speed went away. I found a way to speed up when you want to and slow down when you need to. And I'll explain that today to our audience so they could get started as well. Well, and I know they need to go to that IamSpeedReading.com and they can get your course. But one of the things that you did so effectively and that you teach is how to begin to engage at a subconscious level rather than just conscious. I mean, it's that whole, isn't it, they say that, what is it, 227 words is about as fast as we can talk? in our head very close to it depending there are a few people can go a little quicker but the average is around 200 yeah yeah and and what is it that they're doing what's hindering people well most people read they're not seeing the page they're hearing it with their eyes they're listening to a conversation one word at a time compare that to driving at 70 miles an hour on a highway and reading the road in four directions watching the gps listening to the radio talking to a friend and being on the phone the difference is when we're reading, we're not using that part of our brain that's super fast. And I found a way to tap into the movie in a book. And I've done this with people as young as nine. My grandchildren, uh, Ariel and Maya, one was reading 770 words a minute and one was reading 370 words a minute. Nine years old. A normal nice. adults, 200. Right. My granddaughter last summer read 60 books. I'm talking books like Robinson Crusoe. You know, not uh, Curious George, you know, real <laughs> books. And that's what parents are looking for. They want their kids to be engaged with reading. And most kids, they hate to read because it's too slow. They're used to watching television and movies. And we found the cure to the problem. Well, and you even talk about that, how some people are trained in their brain to, to see so much and will remember everything. Like how many of us, my wife always says, now, we didn't see that movie. I said, yeah, we did. And, and I can tell her the whole story because I can see it, right? And you're telling me that I can kind of um, disconnect the hearing with my eyes. That yes. was a great statement. Yes. Hearing with your eyes yes. versus being able to essentially see the book and view it as a movie. Now, that sounds like for a lot of us, we've never thought in that way because we never learned it. Well, imagine, look at the room you're in right now. Look at the carpet or the, the, the grain in the wood or the grain in the table. Imagine trying to describe that grain on a telephone to people. You can't do it. But instantly, you see that whole pattern, take it in and understand it. Because the power of vision is to take in huge chunks of data quickly. Whereas hearing is auditory, it's one chunk at a time. We play a song on the radio or on a... On a, on a CD or an MP3 and we listen to it, we see a painting instantly. A book is more like a painting right. than a conversation. And if there's time today, I'd like to show them how to get started to yeah, do that. Yeah, I'm hoping that they'll go to the I Am Speed Reading, but how would we begin that process, Howard? Go home after this show is over, pick a book you've read already and understood. We want to make sure the only thing that could confuse you is how quickly you're reading and not what you're reading. Get a timer. A lot of you have smartphones. You have watches with timers. You have an eggshell timer, an egg timer in the kitchen. Time yourself for a minute in the first chapter or the first page of your book and read for a minute the way you normally read. And when the bell goes off, take a pencil, mark off where you finished. So now we know how quickly you can read in a minute. Now go back to the next chapter. This time, take your left hand and go across the page one line at a time one line at a time, totally across, with your eye following your hand as quickly as you can comprehend. 
keep going faster until you can't comprehend to find your ceiling then go back down to the level where the comprehension comes back. For about 10 minutes just practice reading as quickly as you can with your eye following your hand one line at a time and then go back to where you started originally and for one minute time yourself and see how far you can go using your hand to move your eyes. You'll be astounded. You'll go 10, 15, maybe 20 percent further just for that one step. And that's actually the first step in the full reading program that we're giving people the chance to try risk-free. Well one of the things that's really important too is that the more they practice that just moving their hand, the less it becomes an issue in their brain that they're thinking, I gotta move my hand, I gotta move my hand. And all of a sudden that begins to accelerate it even further, doesn't it? It's like typing. First it's like, where's the letter A? Where's the letter A? Where's the letter I still get, do that. The <laughs> but most people when they get good at typing don't have to think where the letters are. You play an instrument. Where's the C chord? Where's the D chord? Initially it's quite painful. You have to kind of think, where's the C chord? And then a few weeks later it's like, play a C, play a D. It's the same thing, the brain wires up when it does something repeatedly and this becomes completely instinctive. And then your speed goes up even further because initially you're thinking about what you're doing while you're reading and then you're just reading again. So your full brain is reading so you see another huge spike in your reading speed. So if you can double initially in just a few hours time Imagine the results you get after a little bit of practice. Who's this really for? I want to get into it because you, you've done, told us some stories of people that have done amazing things. But I, I really want to know, you know, when, when you're talking about learning today, isn't this for everybody? Everybody. Um, to, right now, students, there's a 70% dropout rate in two-year colleges. There's a 50% dropout rate in four-year college. And it's taking six years on average to finish a four-year degree. So if you're a parent and you thought getting your student into college was going to be hard, getting them through college, that's the real challenge. And it's going to cost you 50 to 100% more in tuition fees because they can't read, write, and count fast enough. So students are a big piece of the market. And parents who don't want their kids living with them till they're 40 yeah, really. also <laughs> are a very important part. Then there's the professional. Yeah. Information doubles every six months. There's more printed in one week in the New York Times than a person in the 18th century learned in their whole lifetime. But now the entire economy is based on using information. So reading fast is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. So professionals trying to be more productive, make fewer mistakes, have more time to do the things they love and times for their family and still make a living. Then there's the guy who got laid off. They're going back for new skills and they're flunking out at a 70% dropout rate. So that's a pretty serious problem. Finally, you got seniors who want to stay mentally fit as they get older. And there were two studies, the Baltimore and Seattle longitudinal studies on aging that said that people in their 80s who read showed a lower onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. It didn't cure it but it slowed it down enough so the quality of life remained for a much longer period and in some cases they wouldn't get it till they were so old they were already dead so it never really affected their lives so everyone should be looking at this as a possible tool they could be using to improve their lives or the life of someone they love and the beauty is you buy it for yourself to make more money and your kid does better in school. Well, the other thing though is that I've seen that your technique of beginning to engage your hand is something that whether you're a below 30 millennial type or a, um, the Gen Xer, okay, who's the right now kind of mid-level manager and beginning to be in leadership or the boomer, that, that our brain begins to change its wiring, it seems, the younger that we go. It's more yeah. ADHD oriented. And I'm wondering if those kids aren't, aren't just saying, I can learn more, and you're almost hamstringing me by making me listen to what I should be viewing. You're so right. So many of the students I talk to are so used to television and movies, and then they listen to a book at 200 words a minute. It's like, it's, it's, it's painful. Right. For them. Let me tell you a few of the kids I've helped. Sure. I owned a school. I had a, uh, a homeschool high school. Uh, Stephen graduated University of Texas Arlington at 16 with a 4.0, perfect 4.0 grade point average, degree in economics. And the funny story is he finished at 15. 
His mother said, you can't go to graduate school till you're old enough to drive. And in Texas, it's 16. So she made him go to an extra year of college. And he did a math major in one year. Then he went to Oklahoma University at 18, took a year off. Lazy boy, right? <laughs> really? And he got, graduated at 19 with a master's in math with a 397. He was crushed. He never got a B before. He got all A's and one B. He didn't know what to tell his mom. He got one B. Th then there was Brad. Brad finished four-year college in six months. Went to Korea, learned Chinese in three weeks, became a missionary. Now he nice. teaches my classes in third world countries to help bring up the literacy rate. Uh, Mike, Micah, Micah passed the bar exam in California at 19. His 15-year-old sister is a first-year law student. His 17-year-old brother is a second-year law student. And his 22-year-old brother is an attorney and a flight instructor. What do they have in common? They all are using the program. Now, these kids weren't like gifted and exceptional whatever. They just learned your skill, didn't they? They were intelligent, and he gave them a tool that leveraged the intelligence. Right. A good example was Justin. He was a C student. He could barely do anything when we met him. He was just an average student. He graduated high school at 15. He got his two-year degree at 17, his bachelor's at 19, his master's at 21 in English, and became a sitting professor at 22, C student. When you give people the right instruction, the right tools, you get better results. You try to hammer a nail with your hand, doesn't work as well as a hammer. You try to screw a screw with your fingers, works better with a power screwdriver. You teach people how to learn and use information faster, it makes sense. They're going to learn and learn information faster than using the old-fashioned way. And they're going to learn more than just reading fast. They're learning the whole complete learning system, aren't they? And yeah. especially if you're, I sit there and I think, if you're out of college, you think and some people make about this much of a mistake and start thinking, well, I don't need to read as much anymore. I'm out of college. And, and we all kind of go, wrong. <laughs> you're going to read more than you ever thought you would. But now your income is directly related to your education. Now, when I say education, it's not what they, they trained you in college to do. It's what you're doing every single day to increase your value to the marketplace. If they increase their value to the marketplace, do they make more money, Howard? I used to lecture with Zig, Zig Ziglar. Zig would say, rich people have big libraries, poor people have big TVs. <laughs> and he's right. Uh, what you know is what determines your income. A brain surgeon makes more money than a floor wiper because you'll pay more money to have a tumor removed than to clean your house. Right. Uh, the, the other thing is since information doubles every six months, I don't care what you're doing, staying on top of the information is taking a significant amount of your time. Cut that time in half and you have more time to spend on your business and more time to spend with your family. So it's about being successful in a knowledge-based economy. It's no longer a luxury to read quicker. It's a necessity, and it isn't being taught. And you're right. It's not about fast. It's about learning. I thought maybe I could give people a little tip on what to learn. Sure. One of the things I do want to encourage you, what Howard's talking about is what you get at the imspeedreading.com website. And he's created a really phenomenal program just for me and saying, hey, Pat, here's the thing that will help your audience. So if you're listening and you want to learn faster and be more and really keep up with, I'll say, your industry, but even more than that, keep up with the world around you, then go to imspeedreading.com. Get the, the material. Now, it's guaranteed, so, right? Yeah, and it's actually, I've given them a $150 discount off of my normal price. So they're actually. Rock. Thank you. Yeah, Thank and you I'm letting them much. try it for 30 days free. And if they need help, I give them my personal contact information. I will help them. I was a teacher for 10 years, mm -hmm. and I'm still a teacher. I don't think it's about selling a program, it's about changing people's lives. So if people need your help, you should help them accomplish what they expected when they got something. The good news is very few people call because they made it so easy very to good. learn. And one yeah. of the secrets is what do you learn? Yeah, what do you learn? There's only five things you really need to learn. First thing is the new words. About 80% of any new subjects is vocabulary. Right. Second thing are people and names. Well, who's in the book? What did they do? Third thing is any formula, a statistic, or number, or date. You have to know those things. They're there, not for decoration. Right. They're important. You look at the headings and subheadings inside of a nonfiction book, and you're looking for the five most important ideas. And the last thing are the questions. Now, most people read questions at the end. 
Then they say, oh, I don't know the answer and have to go look for it. I read the questions first so I know what I'm looking for. Right. Then when I find it, I go, this is what I'm looking for. And it takes me a fraction of the time to find what I need to know. And by using that strategy, learning those five things, we did a group of kids aged 11 to 15. We gave them a 30-chapter book in lifelong developmental psychology, which is a sophomore book in college, not nice. a freshman book. And 18 students took the CLEP. We want to write that down, C-L-E-P, for credit. And 15 out of 18 students passed it in one week. Done with college psychology at 11 years old. Nice. And the beauty is, now when they apply to a college, they have college credit. Mm -hmm. They're a much better prospect. They have a higher chance of getting that scholarship money. And the confidence that that youngster has when they enter college is one that, I've done this, I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to do really well when I get here. Versus college scares me. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. And then you have a 70% dropout rate because they can't handle it. They can't read, write, or count fast enough to do the work. Well, and here's the other thing that's kind of important. You know, you talk about six years versus four years. I went through college in five years. I paid for most of it myself because I worked in the oil field during the summer uh, on a rig, and I got a lot of money doing that. Well, that helped a ton. I came out with not a lot of debt. The kids that are coming out today. And greasy hands. Yeah, uh, <laughs> greasy hands. I, I guarantee I was greasy everywhere. Um, and, but the thing was is that I came, I came out of that. I didn't have much debt. The kids that are coming out, my, I have a son right now uh, who's uh, been at Lamar the last four years. He is uh, going to come out with a ton of debt because he didn't, he didn't pay with it uh, with his sweat equity. He's done the borrow the money, pay it back. He got a lot of college uh uh, grants and, and uh, some scholarships and things because he implemented some of the things that I taught him that you taught me. But the fact is, is that he's going to come out with a lot of debt. If he goes five, six years, that's going to add twenty to $30,000 a year. The like owning a house without the house. Right. And I think right now they said that college debt is higher than credit card debt. Oh, it's in incredible, country. and it's, it's actually a, a, f a revenue source for the government in a big way, like yes. more than taxes. And the thing that's really funny, though, is, and this is why I want to say, you know, $30,000 or $60,000 extra when you could invest $147 or $149 and get what? Learn how to learn. So not only you get through school, and this is the big piece. You learn how to build your own company. Right. You know, what's happening now is college graduates can't find work. That's right. Many of them are making that eight buck an hour job with the sixty thousand dollar debt that they have to pay off, and it's a shame because they were smart enough to go through school. They're smart enough to start a company. How do you start a company? You read books. That's you right. read books by people who started companies that were successful in the thing you want to do. You read one book, maybe they got lucky. You read 10 books by 10 people doing what you want to do. You have a business plan. And now you're prepared to be successful. So instead of depending on someone to hire you at eight bucks an hour, you become an entrepreneur. You learn how to think for yourself. You take that education, you leverage it, and you become a success. And if you need to change skills, change quickly. I'll give you a quick story. About eight years ago, we wanted to go to Hawaii on a cruise ship. And they wanted me to teach Photoshop. And I said, oh, I teach that all the time. They didn't even know what it was. Now, Photoshop takes four years to learn in college. And I had 10 days to learn it. And I thought it would take me a few hours. Well, the dummies book was 800 pages. So I bought 10 books. I read it in three hours. I read fast. I did. You do have the world record. <laughs> I did four days of workshops on Photoshop to photographers and videographers who knew it already. And they wanted to know how many years it took to learn at the level I was at. And I said, oh, it takes a long time. It was I learned <laughs> learn last week. But that's how well I learned it. And that's what people need to do in business. How many of them need to learn a new piece of software or social networking or marketing or communication? Who's got six months to learn these things? What if you could do it in an afternoon and actually make some money tomorrow? That's what it's about. When you, they go to I Am Speed Reading, what are they going to get, Howard? It's two DVDs and an activity CD. It takes four hours. We guarantee it'll at least double their reading speed or their money back. In fact, we did a double-blind study where they 
scientific research company took 100 people, gave them nothing but the program, and the average person doubled to quadrupled in four hours' time. Most double. Many, many did better, but most doubled. So we guarantee that. I give them my contact information. You have a question, you're not getting customer service, you're getting me, the fastest reader in the world. I will make sure you learn it because my goal isn't to sell programs, it's to help make a better world. Right. And when people learn faster and understand more, they make fewer mistakes, they have more choices, the kids can do things they could never do before. Seniors stay mentally fit. People have time to spend with their families. That's what this is about. It's about taking something that helped me and helped over a million other people become more successful and get it into the hands of our audience to help them become more successful as well. And they, and they just go to IamSpeedReading.com, yes. fill out the form, they'll get the material in, what, four or five days, something like that in, in the U.S. And they can try it with free for 30 days. So for any reason they're not happy, send it back. But nobody sends it back because it works. It's fun. I was on Comedy Central nine times. I was John Stewart's first guest on television. Because I understand that learning works better when you're having fun than when you're bored and saying, someone help me, when is this going to be over? Right. I make sure that they enjoy it so much they want more. Right. And I know that there's so much of the, the stuff that they can just, they'll go through it, they'll be able to implement right away, and you're gonna change their world, aren't you? Teach them how to read faster, what to look for, how to find it, how to remember it, how to recall it, even figure out what the questions are gonna be on tests and at business meetings before you even crack the book. So that problem is, what am I looking for? You know exactly where it is, what you're looking for, when you found it, and how to make sure you don't have to read it 50 times to remember it. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> I tell you, for a lot of people, you will change their world. I know you did mine. And that's one of the things that I have to tell you folks is that Howard really did change my world. When I started using and implementing his materials, I went from being somebody that was, that was just trying to keep up to someone that became a national presence in his industry because I was able to not only just keep up but excel and then transfer that information, teach it to others in a way that it, it put me on a national stage. I also was able to work with Zig Ziglar. It was one of the honors of my life and then on to other people that, that literally you're just taking the information that you've learned, teaching them, and that's what this is about. Go to IamSpeedReading.com, and I'll tell you, if you want to keep up, you want to get this material. Go to IamSpeedReading.com, get his stuff, get Howard's materials. It will change your world. The Business Spotlight is really about helping business owners like Howard help people like you get where you want to go. I'm so thankful you've been here tonight. I look forward to next week. We'll see more of the Business Spotlight. See you then.